All right, guys, so today we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to learn how to properly connect. Today I want to clarify the purpose of the equipment grounding conductor. Now, I, I don't mean to insult you. I know you're a very skilled electrician, but just hang with me a few minutes. It's good for us to go back over the ABCs and the basics. For one, sometimes we pick up something that we didn't catch in the past. And for two, it's good for uh, the importance of these things to be on the forefront of our mind. So I want to talk to you about the purpose and the function of the equipment grounding conductor. All right, so the equipment grounding conductor, we're going to say we bring over a simple circuit of a hot, a neutral, and a ground. It can be either bare or covered, solid or stranded, and we're going to bring that over to our you know, imaginary piece of equipment. We're going to say that this is a piece of equipment that we're going to hardwire, and the entire shell of it is metal. All right, so the purpose of uh, you know using the equipment grounding conductor, it's a normal non-current carrying conductor, but we want it there just in case there is an electrical fault, meaning that current is leaking outside of its intended path on the metal parts or on anything trying to go back to the source, and that current is just leaking. So when we get to this piece of equipment, we're going to hook up the equipment grounding conductor, and we're gonna we're gonna bond the shell of that frame, the metal shell of that frame. And the reason is, is if that if the wire were to ever become nicked or the motor burn out inside, or you know we, we uh, pinch the Romex connector on too tight, or say there's a nick in one of the wires from the factory or one of their um, quick connects you know, is leaning up against the piece of metal. And what this is going to do if we have the equipment grounding conductor hooked up is it's gonna quickly clear the fault. And let me explain what that means. So what we're trying to do with the equipment grounding conductor is create a super low resistance path all the way back to the source, all the way back to the earth. And what that super low resistance path is going to do is offer an um, a seemingly unlimited amount of current to flow instantly. So we want a super low resistance path in order to raise the current quickly in order to trip the breaker or the fuse. Okay, so if I've got a number 12 conductor and I have a fault, we want that current to shoot up as high as it can, as quick as it can, in order to quickly trip that 20 amp breaker on the other side. So we wouldn't want a loose connection that would maybe not raise the current high enough, or if it's not connected at all, we're going to talk about that here in just a second. So the purpose of the equipment grounding conductor is to provide a super low resistance path in order that if current does leak on it, it provides a super low resistance path, which will shoot that current through the roof. It's going to allow almost an unlimited amount of current to flow for the short amount of time, long enough um, for the you know overcurrent device to trip. We want the current to quickly shoot up over 20 amps fast. We want it to shoot to, you know un, you know seemingly unlimited amount of amps in order to quickly clear the fault and trip the breaker. All right, so let's walk through a scenario if you did not hook up that equipment grounding conductor. So let's say you come to the piece of equipment, you did not hook up the equipment, the, hook up the equipment grounding conductor, and there happens to be a nick on the wire or a fault inside of the machine. What's going to happen is that entire machine is going to potentially be carrying voltage. Let's say there's a good solid nick and somebody cramped down the Romex connector, we're going to say too tight, it pinched all the way through the wire just enough to go through the hot, and you didn't hook up the equipment grounding conductor. So here's the scenario, guys. That entire shell of that machine is going to be carrying some voltage, whether it's 30 volts, 90 volts, or 120 volts, just depends on how well that connection is made. So let's say, and I've seen this many times, that the shell of that machine is carrying a full 120 volts. Okay, so now, if that shell of that machine is carrying 120 volts, all of the metal parts associated with that machine are also going to be carrying 120 volts. So if you walk up to this piece of equipment and you touch the piece of equipment and you touch something else that is grounded or you're standing in a grounded position, you are now going to become the light bulb and your body is likely not going to be enough resistance to trip the breaker. So you could get locked on it and it kill you. You could just be shocked and it aggravates you. So at the end of the day, guys, the purpose of the equipment grounding conductor is to clear that fault. We want any fault that's in a system to be quickly cleared by offering a super low resistance path in order that the current shoots very high in order that it trips the breaker or the fuse on the other side. So if we don't hook up that equipment grounding conductor, everything inside that circuit, every metal pipe it's connected to, can also become energized. In a nightmare scenario, you could be 
you know, you could hook up a piece of equipment, it's got other pieces of metal, or it's just laying against other pieces of metal, and you energize large portions of a system. So you could energize gas pipe, you could energize water pipe, you could energize just framing steel, and literally, guys, there have been young children in cities who have died from handrails being energized, from pole lights being energized, where people just simply did not hook up the equipment grounding conductor or did not make a solid connection. It's not one thing just to hook it up. We got to make sure it's a rock solid connection and when in doubt whip it out pull your meter out guys and you can actually take the continuity setting where it beeps and you can ohm things out and make sure that they're electrically connected you could take a water pipe and then you know put it to the panel screw on the outside of the panel and make sure that it beeps if the water lines bonded and just make sure that you have a good rock solid bond so if there's ever current leaking anywhere in the system it's going to provide a super low resistance path back to the source back to the earth which is going to quickly raise the current which is going to open the overcurrent device which is going to save someone's this is the electrical code coach this is the electricians in action let's go ahead and get to it